advance the ball forward when it comes to cancer research and cancer treatment. Uh, under the First Lady's leadership, the Cancer Connect Collaborative uh, has broken down long-standing silos between researchers, cancer facilities, and medical providers to improve cancer research and treatment. Um, in March of last year, Florida became the first state in the nation to collect cancer recurrence data. Uh, before the initiative, there was no population-level data system to monitor cancer recurrence in any state. Um, and so we are now on a path to bringing visibility to recurrence rates in Florida the Florida Cancer Innovation Fund, and this year we seek to do even more. Uh, in my budget recommendations for the upcoming fiscal year, we included more than $232 million for cancer research, including $60 million for the Florida Cancer Innovation Fund and $127.5 million uh, for the First Lady's Cancer Research. much around this time I was making Valentine's Day uh, cards for our kids um, and that was because I wanted to make sure that they had something to open because I was going to be getting surgery at that time for cancer and now you fast forward to today two years later and I'm up at five o'clock in the morning making nearly a hundred Valentine's Day cards because of course I had to have some for first grade for pre-k for kindergarten so to really say that I've come a long way in two years I really have um, it's a testament to people in this room. It's a testament to the governor who throughout the entire process, I mean, I had great doctors, oncologists, plastic surgeons. They know who they are. I can never tell them how much I, I thank them for everything that they did to save my life. But the governor had to live with me. Uh, and I'm sure that wasn't easy at times, especially when we had a 4-3 and a 1-year-old running around the house. Uh, and so for him to be able to support me, but also to give me hope throughout the process, I mean, as you all well know, he understands and analyzes data. He reads it. He was giving me a no BS assessment of what I was facing to have that strength to be there with me through everything, all while taking care of small children. Um, it really, it, it meant a lot. So I don't think it's a coincidence. It wasn't planned that this was on Valentine's Day, but here we are. Uh, so listen, it has been uh, a journey, right? And uh, you can talk to, to Dr. Diaz, who uh, he is a cancer survivor now of what, eight years, nine years? And uh, you have a choice when you go through something like this. And one of the first things that I wanted to do was run into a hole and hide or a closet. I never wanted to talk about the word cancer. As a matter of fact, I didn't even really refer to it as cancer. You don't even like saying the word. But you know, I had a choice, particularly in the unique position that I am as First Lady. It is not about me. It is about, I have the opportunity with this title for the next three years to get people far smarter than me into a room to be able to make a difference. I had learned things along the way, but man, I'll tell you what, having this position as First Lady, you gotta get into the arena. You gotta fight. We talked about in a totally separate uh, event that we had mental health. And he said something very profound at the time. He said, I don't want you guys to work in silos. I want you to collaborate. I want you to communicate. I want to.
or with cancer. Everybody is being diagnosed, it seems like, with some form of cancer almost every day. And so therefore, we have to make sure this isn't about competitive advantage. Uh, honesty, this is another one of the tenets of the collaborative. When I was meeting with some of my cancer docs, I would ask them, you know, do we really know, like, how did I get cancer? Like, I had never had a history of breast cancer. I didn't have the BRCA genes. I didn't, I thought I was healthy. I thought I exercised. And here I am. And I would ask some of them, I would say, do we know? And they're like, yeah, we do know a lot of what causes it. Clearly the smoking, I don't smoke, but clearly there are things that you can do that contribute it. Well, I'll tell you what. We need to communicate everything that we know about what causes cancer to the people. No partisan anything, no uh, agenda, nothing. I don't want to see somebody promoting something because they want to try to move a product. I want to know what causes it, what can we do to communicate to the people of the state and this country so they can make the decisions to protect themselves and their families. And so that's another tenet. And the last is innovation. Um, meeting with a lot of folks, there are a lot of really great technologies. Are there barriers to entry? Are there a lot of red tape and a lot of bureaucracy? Are there things that are happening that are preventing these from getting out to the hospitals and getting to people, and if so, what are they, and how do you reduce it, um, and how do you fund that, and how do you how do you look at it? So that leads us to the announcement today, which is very exciting. So of the 140 million, 20 million has gone out the door to 30 different recipients in our Cancer Innovation Fund, and we started this because traditionally, in Florida, a lot of the money, all of the money. Uh, that was appropriated would go to nationally accredited cancer institutes. But if you look, the majority of the cancers in the state of Florida are treated exterior of the NCIs. So we wanted to make sure that whatever technology, innovations, best practices, what have you, across the state of Florida, they have funds to be able to utilize that, to, to then bring into the conversation and the discourse, to be able to have opportunities, to be able to, to make a difference. So we're doing 20 million in the innovation fund to 30 different recipients from 16 different institutions. Uh, and that leads me now to three of the recipients who are here to talk a little bit about uh, their grant and is that me or you, Secretary? I don't know. I kept moving back a little bit. I don't know if you noticed that I was trying. Because don't you hate it when the thing goes off and then everybody's ears get blown up? Uh, OK, so Dr. Panetta, Nicholas Panetta, who is now the chair of the Department of Uh, to study new technologies and techniques such as the one uh, that, that is specific to my practice uh, in a way that wasn't really previously possible, right? And so that's certainly going to have a positive impact uh, on the lives of Floridians afflicted with this, uh, with cancer. And I, I think an important thing, especially that the Cancer Innovation Fund is doing, is it's bridging a gap. So, you know, as we all know, the hardest part of any project is just to act, to start. I always tell the residents and everything that the hardest part of anything they do when they're writing a paper or doing something is writing the title page, right? Just to get started. So I think what we found as part of the work done by this collaborative, uh, especially is that Florida is full of a bunch of really, really bright people with a bunch of inertia ready to act, but they don't have the resources required to kind of engage in that. And I think that these funds have really worked to bridge that gap early on lymphatic microsurgery. Uh, I'm in a unique position where I get to see we've gotten pretty good and we're getting better all the time at treating cancer. But what's left after that is, is the aftermath of those treatments sometimes, and those can be really unfortunate and morbid and debilitating for patients. And so I've set to the task of figuring out how to minimize those complications after breast cancer treatment, and certainly the funds that have been allocated to pursue that work uh, are undoubtedly going to help patients. Uh, it was from Mayo Clinic's Department of Cancer Biology. His project will uh, work to distinguish biomarkers to support uh, the early detection of pancreatic cancer. And it is sometimes less than one year, but with technology and advancements, we're making uh, a lot of head, uh, headwinds on this. Uh, Dr. Embezzo. 
Is he not here? I got the names confused. Did I get it wrong? Yeah. Did I mix them up? Yeah, the Wear Camp. <laughs> what did I do? Wear Camp, Dr. Wear Camp. Okay, come on up. All right. Got it. You can vote. Did you know that you were doing that? <laughs> see, see how great the collaborative is? We, we really All other women and ladies in this 101.5 million people in this area that we work in. So this funding is going to increase a lot of health literacy about the risk factors for breast cancer and also create linkages for folks to get both screening and early access to treatment and detection. Oh, and thank you, Dr. Mbezo. We appreciate you being here and all that you're doing to help save lives in early detection. And this is just part and parcel. I think you heard the governor's recommendations. I know did for me, what my great physicians did for me, uh, and that is to provide hope uh, that you can beat this. I know there's a lot of people who are going through some very difficult times. It is a very difficult thing to go through, no matter what the stage, uh, no matter what the type. Uh, it is the same people because at the end of the day you know cancer affects so many people and you all probably all know somebody who is you'd have to break it down into layman's terms small words for me to be able to understand the idea is to get good people to be talking about and smart I just called you Dr. C. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. There you go.